We are Valley Automotive in Winchester, Virginia. Today's episode, we are going to build out 1967 Mustang seats. Please like us, share us, and subscribe to us. We appreciate the assistance as we build out our channel. Enjoy. We are working on a 1967 Fastback Mustang. Uh, working on the seats right now for our project. You can see uh, quite a few pieces hanging in preparation as we continue this build at Valley Automotive. Uh, we will share more video as we build out our channel. Um, but the idea is what we want to do is complete uh, the second seat, this being the one I just completed recently, um, with a brand new TMI seat kit. You'll also see here I have the back already done, and I'll have a video at some point about how the back was done. But let's take a look before I start covering these seats, what you have in front of you. Basically, uh, a 50-year-old piece of steel that... Uh, is still in great shape. Uh, so looking at the bottom seat, uh, if you're a backyard mechanic, there is, uh, you get what, uh, it's in your shed, right? Pull out sandpaper, whatever you can get to make this surface rust and uh, go away. Um, traditionally, again, nobody's gonna see this. This is all under the seat, but you wanna protect it for future um, so that it doesn't uh, erode away underneath you. I use a combination of things. Uh, you get a power tool like that with your, you know, I have a have an air compressor, 60. It gets me done. It runs a lot, but uh, it'll knock all this off pretty quickly. And if you want to go further, uh, if that's not enough, a 40 grit or an 80 grit sandpaper uh, would work. Uh, so once you get that down to where you want it, uh, you can hit it with any kind of product that's out there. Uh, you know. Go down to Walmart, go down to uh, your local store, uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, um, and get some sort of a rust performer. Uh, I tend to just buy what's on the shelf that, that has the word rust, uh, some sort of a rust protection. <laughs> I find uh, Rust-Oleum is always an easy, good product. It's not too expensive, obviously. Uh, and I'll hit it with a satin black. You can choose any color you want. Hell, you can choose white for that matter. It's all going to be under uh, under material. Um, but for, you know, the traditionalist, and it looks nice, um, a satin black is uh, is a nice, a nice uh, color to use. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where you get it done, and only you know, or photos will prove, that you've done it in such a way that uh, makes you proud at the end of the day. All right, so I'm not gonna clean all this up now on video. I'll clean it up and we'll go on to the next step. Find something that has a good, uh, soft but durable piece of material. This actually was a piece of headliner that we had for an old AMX uh, that we had actually built out. This is the headliner material we used. Foam on one side and very tough. It's like a polyester nylon kind of a, very, very tough to rip, even cut for that matter. So it's a great piece of material to wrap around here and take your hog rings, snap them on, put them in place, hold it on tight and uniform all the way around. And then once you get that in place, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put on the foam seat. That'll be our next segment. Uh, for now, let me go ahead and do this and tie it up and then we'll come right back. Okay, we talked about the seat's bottom with the material that we just installed to soften the row around and the edges around the bottom seat. Um, the advantage to this is that it just adds more protection. As you will find, this will fit nicely like a glove, like a glove, if you get their nice material. These come from, uh, this is uh, with TMI's, tmiproducts.com. Uh, they offer these. What's nice about these cushion kits, the top and the bottom, is uh, they have the steel 
rods going through them and they are part of the cushion. They were embedded into the cushion. So it makes it nice when you put it on here and you get your hog rings in place, you can find, go through the steel piece into your track down below. We know that exists because it was actually the original that I left in there uh, and it is connected to a track itself as well. So a little uh, security there, but go through it, grab on the hog ring onto the track and this should fall in place pretty nicely. Now, you'll see from the bottom of this what kind of fit this will be. And it fits in there very nicely. Look at that. So, so this cushion that we created, you asked, well, why do we do that? Because this is awfully very uh, foamy and thick. Um, well, why not? This is probably the only time you're ever going to open this seat up. Uh, you went ahead and painted it. You went through the, uh, uh, the effort of cleaning it. Why not add some extra cushion? Over time, you can see this, this being the seat that's completed. Over time, the pleather softens up enough and this breaks down now you're gonna get 50 years out of it i don't see why not uh not gonna be here to see that but uh, uh point is you got it you'll never do this again why not do it as best as you can before putting the new foam on and you will not regret it for no extra little extra time and effort put into it anyhow our next step now is we're going to work on the top piece. Okay, so all I've done so far is actually just slipped on over the cushion that we've completed and uh, prepared myself to put in a couple of hog rings, which I did just already. I just want to kind of uh, give you a couple of pointers here. Um, placement and alignment. So <clears throat> that cushion is uh, new and hard and thick to really manipulate too much. Um, it is form fitted, but there's still a bit of uh, positioning that needs to take place uh, so that your seat doesn't look too awkward or the alignment of the lines when they match up with the bottom piece uh, is off and that uh, material is equal on both sides. So the easiest thing I've done here or done in all the installs through trial and error is slip it on, line it up on both sides. Just take it and make sure you have equal material here and here. All right, use the rails as your guide and stretch as much as you can that you have enough material on both sides. That's your indicator that you at least uh, position it correctly on the front on a left to right side. Now, the bottom is probably one of your most important, important places to line up as well. Up here, this you can maneuver, manipulate. You have a lot of give here in the cushion, so that's an easy process. The bottom, however, uh, is where you wanna make sure that you get it right. So this line here is what's going to line up with your bottom piece, essentially here, okay? So you wanna make sure that's right. So that's your next step. Getting this aligned across the back, which really is just taking it and bringing it forward Taking the material as much that you can forward and then hog tying it down. Okay. Um, then once you get that in place, I usually do the top last. Once you get that in place, you want to squeeze these together, get these in position, right? And what I'm going to call, I guess, uh, walk the dog, go all the way around until all of these are nice and tight where you want them. And then you'll see the final product when it's done will be a nice, clean, very tight, uh, well finished product. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera just not to waste your time uh, and come back with the final. But some things to take note of here is your back plate, this piece, which I always put on last, as you'll probably you'll see in a little while as we move through this video, why, uh, it's just cardboard. And 
This is a very visual thing from the back of your back seat. You don't want to scar this up too much. And there's some manhandling going on here uh, with trying to get this stuff uh, done just right. Trying to get this piece attached to the bottom, which we'll look at later on. So this is your last measure. Once I'm done with the seat, I have it actually all together like this. This is the last thing I'm ever going to do. But what's important here is these alignment pieces. These pieces that include um, adding the, uh, what they call the door springs, I guess they call them. But uh, into, and I'll get to that later, but in sliding those in place and lining them up with where they actually squeeze through in these holes. Um, so the point to that is when you put this on, do not haul ring your material to the placement that you're going to need to push the pins through. These round holes, these round holes are specifically for those pieces to attach to the back, okay? So keep that in mind, very important. So then when you ask, well, where do I attach the hole rings? Well, if you look at them from the manufacturer's side, they pretty much attach them to the springs. They attach them anywhere they can get a hold of, um, out of the way of the, uh, uh, the holes that are to be used for the backing. Um, and so it's nice on the bottom, they have them. Nice on the top, they actually have placement of them. You'll see a combination here. You'll see the circle and the place where you want to attach your hog ring. And then you would cut through the material to get to the circle. Now, that's fine, but what about the sides? The sides, there's springs that are here. You're going to want to try to squeeze this around and attach to the springs. Again, this is never going to be seen once you put the back on. All right, so coming along here, I got the sides now done. Uh, actually, not really happy with that one there. Something to note. So we haven't really gone over what these pliers are. These are nice little uh, all ring pliers. Um, you can see this close up. You want to order this from uh, any of the distributors as a kit, usually. I haven't talked about this already. I'll kill it in editing, but anyhow. Uh, you'll see how they actually just spring on. This is spring loaded, uh, holds it in place for you, which is great because you're you're getting something in position and you just want to grab this and snap it on. Um, and then these are hog rings. You can get these in two, I think 250 and 500. Uh, this is a 500 pack, I believe. Yeah, 500 pack. Uh, I believe I got these from CJ Pony recently. Um, so just close up, once you get your material in place, you just want to grab that, squeeze as hard as you can and it pops them off. All right. Sometimes you find that you've made an error or it just didn't clip in correctly. This piece right here is that you can do a couple things. You can take it, hold of it, squeeze it and turn it and then pull it off, which is Pretty easy, straightforward, but sometimes you might want to me not mess up your material. It may rip your material when you don't want it. So get yourself a good pair of, uh, these are Mac tools, I believe, chompers. All right, something that snaps that without even breaking a sweat. All right. So these are a nice tool to have uh, when you have a position like this where you want to get that off of there. Just a little snap, I'm not tearing the material, get the trash can nearby. These things are a bear to step on in the middle of the night, barefoot. Uh, and then load your gun in place, prepare the material, have it standing by, snap it on. And that's how you use the hog rings. Okay, now we are done with the back. It's nice all the way around. If you want to check yourself, basically get your back plate, stick it in place. Know that everything lines up nicely. There's no marks or stretch, stretched areas. That's too far out of uh, out of position. That's going to look nice once it's all done and set. All right. And the front, more importantly, is the final product. Nice and tight all the way around. Everything lines up. Uh, pretty much uh, your lines are horizontal and your sides are nice and even. 
nice and tight, both sides, in pretty good shape. So this actually is done for now. We're gonna set this aside and move on to the bottom piece, which uh, can be a little more of a, a bear, um, particularly to slide it on. It slid on easily and manipulated it once it was nice and warm. The bottom's slightly different, 